Be seated in the presence of the Lord. Is anybody blessed? Job 7 verse 11. Today I'm preaching on what I try to speak to evil arrow to go back to sender. And that's why we are here for the oil purging. This uh, Wednesday, sorry, and next Wednesday. And I have a good news for you that the witchcraft program has been extended to two more weeks. So two more Sundays. Pastor Mebe said, two men appeared to her and said, tell Pastor John Mark with anger not to preach or pray against us. We are witchcraft. That if he kills everybody, who will be left? Now he has declared war against us. Tell him not to try it again. So I came back to try it now. So in case you are a wish in this church, just pack your load and go somewhere else. If you are not ready to be delivered, Tiago go to hallelujah. Do you love the extension? So this Sunday, please, they should just extend it in the media department on the TV. This Sunday and next Sunday. Then, as God will have it, next Wednesday and the coming Wednesday. That's, that's probably the end of this month, isn't it? Therefore, I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Give me another translation. I cannot keep from speaking. So if you are witchcraft here, I must continue to speak. I must express my anguish and my bitter soul must complain. Any power that wants you to be silent, when you are dying in silence, you are dying in pain, as he wants you to be silent, we declare war against that witchcraft. We declare war against that strong man. If your amen is not poor as you lift your hand, I send the arrow back to sender. In Numbers 23, 23, it says, No enchantment against Jacob, neither divination against Israel. According as it is, no curse can touch Jacob. Ah, uh, what? Uh, no magic has any power against Israel. For now it will be said of Jacob, the what wonders God has done for Israel. I want to pray for someone here. Any altar they have raised against you privately, briefly, secretly, that you should fall in. I declare the altar back to sender. I declare the altar back to sender. That divination of God is it. I fired it back. As your amen is not borrowed for speaking, so the arrow go back to sender. Can I hear that amen louder like thunder? That translation said, I will not keep silent. Sir, in the battle of life, if you don't stand for something, you'll be empty. You'll be what? Because the battle of life is not here to play with you. Is real. Somebody says real. Say it like you mean it. Say real. So if your mouth did not cry out, the devil does not respect your cry. Neither does he respect your pity. He only respects your tongue. In. He respects your what? Your tongue. In. Even the devil pray, but their prayer is enchantment. Their prayer is incantation. Somebody called me yesterday and said his sister in laws went to his husband's land because the husband is dead. They want to claim everything from her. And then they were monitoring them. Three of them, three sister in laws, were in the land, raining cartation. The small girl that your, your brother left, who will take care of the girl and the small children? Even the one is backing. 
they, they, they kill the man just to take the property and take everything. There is no station they've not gone to. All because they want to take car, they want to take land. He said, as I speak to you, they are in the land doing incantation. I said, they are only doing incantation. Your own is prayer. After the incantation, it does not go up. It only goes down. So from today, I prophesy. Any altar the enemy have raised against you. As a witchcraft incantation. As a witchcraft backup. That has a potency to enter your body. I send the incantation back to hell. I send it back to sender. Anything they give you to eat in the gym to swallow. I reverse it back to sender. As you shut the amen, you are delivered by fire, by thunder. Child of God, in the battle of life, sir, if you don't stand for anything, you fall for everything. If you don't stand for anything, this is what I'm standing for. You fall for everything. Because the enemy is not looking at you. To wish you good luck. In this life we are sir. You don't excel. By good luck. Or good brain. You excel. By incantation. What I mean by incantation. You excel by prayer. You are neither here. Neither you are here. And then we are in this world today. A majority of the churches today of course. They are dwelling on spiritual incantations. Evil incantation, Evil summary. And then you cannot keep silence. That is why the Bible said, Have you commanded the money since you believe? Have you spoken to the dead spring that they may know their place? So anything you determine by the money, by the crying of the day, will be determined. What you determine the night, it was you obtained in the day. And I came here by judgment. That anything the enemy have done to put a mark on your life by saying this one is waiting demolition. Today, that mark will go back to sender. In Psalm 35, verse 7 to 8, for without a cause have they hid for me their nets. And these are not nets you see, it is not glare. But the Bible says, for without a curse, have they hid from me their nets. And the mission of the net is to end you in the pit. And their net in a pit. Which without cause, they have dig for me. They have dig for my soul. And in verse 8. What is your prayer point? Everybody, let's go. As you stand up, I prophesy that destruction will come on them unaware. That is what we call Okbetushe Perabo. Trouble fall on every side. You go here, trouble. You don't have trouble. You go from trouble. You go back, trouble. Nowhere to escape. I pray for someone here. Every plain piece of the enemy, plan of the enemy, evil trap against you, it will backfire there. It will come against them. The Bible says, let destruction come on them unaware. Before they think they are standing, destruction will hit their camp. Destruction will hit their children. As you shut them, you are delivered by fire. In 1 King 13, verse 1 to 4. Sir, the battle you carry determines the load of glory that you carry. The battle you carry, sir, can tell of the load you carry. He said, and behold, there came a man of God out of the dust earth. Out of Oruworu. Out of Ibogidi. Out of Judah. Out of your foundation. Out of your family. By the word. Unto better. As Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn his hands. Every evil strong man standing by the altar to challenge you as the prophet to your family. 
as a prophet to your father's house, as a one that understands spiritual things, that say you cannot escape from the trap of the family. Every Jeroboam, the Lord shall disgrace them. The Lord shall deliver you from the evil altars. Any summon against you shall backfire. Somebody shall fire three times. By this expression, everybody should have known the man of God because the scripture didn't want to mention his name. But he gave details analysis that you can trace the man of God. And in verse 2, verse 3, the scripture said, and he cried against the altar. Who is crying against your father altar? Who is crying against the altar you are calling? Sir, in this life, even if you lock yourself inside the house, you must have an enemy. The Bible, Jesus said, what to you? If every man is talking good of you, it means you are not a good disciple. That you lie down in the house, you don't want an enemy. Or you don't greet anybody, you don't want an enemy. It's a must. You must have. And what did he say, sir? Let's go. And the Bible said, and he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord. And said, oh altar, altar. Thus here the Lord behold. A child shall be born. Unto the house of David. Jesus by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that born incense upon thee. And men born shall be born upon thee, crying, O God, arise. Verse 3 to verse 4. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is a sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, shall be scattered, and the ashes that are upon it shall poured out. That's the sacrifice. And it came to pass. When King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which he had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, lay hold on him and his hand, which he put forth against him, dry up, so that he could not put it again to him. Anything they have put in your life, to destroy you, to waste your life, to dead, they die where anything they program to waste your life, waste your head, waste your family, waste your generation, and return it back to sender. As you shout that amen, the evil arrow go back to sender. What is the conclusion? The altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar. According to the sign which a man of God had given by the word of the Lord. There are many Jeroboam that are saying to our prayer point, lay hold on that prayer. Why was he stretching his hand? Because of the prophecy of the man. He was against somebody to rise. He was against a star to come alive. That is the strong man of witchcraft. There are people who play around you but they jealous you. what is coming next that will make good in your life. Lay hold on him. And the Bible said the hand dried up. Today, anything that has entered your body, enter your spirit man. As you take this oil here today, that thing shall dry up. Anything the program against you to waste your life, as you take off this oil here, this fire, this purging, that thing shall be uprooted. Any demon that monitor you here because you are coming to the altar to cry to pray to call upon the God of the altar, and there is someone saying, Lay hand on him. That person shall be disappointed, that person shall be disgraced. As you shout the amen, you are delivered from their projection, you are delivered from their affliction, you are delivered from their hands. Let your amen roll like fire, like thunder. Hosea 9.14 Deuteronomy 28 verse 7 The Bible said in, part, in the part B He said God give them a miscarrying womb 
and a dry breast. Anyone raising their head to trouble you, God shall give them a miscarrying womb. God shall give them a dry breast. A breast that will not produce greatness, that will not produce milk, a breast that will not bring the cry of a baby. Anything they labor shall miscarriage. They shall know you serve a God of fire. Lift your hands and shout fire. Lift your leg and shout fire. Deuteronomy 28. The Lord shall cause the enemies that rise up against thee to be smiting before thy face. They shall come out against thee in one way and flee before thee in seven ways. Today I want to announce to you anyone that have announced your obituary privately, secretly, by programming attack, sickness, anything they projected, today they shall run at a scatter. No place shall cover them from today. No hidden place shall cover them. They shall be exposed if your amen is not borrowed. Esther chapter 7 verse 7 to 10. And then we will go again to verse 6 verse 7 to 12. The scripture said that the king arising from the banquet of the wine of his rod went into the palace garden. And Haman stood up to make requests for his life. For he saw that there was evil determined against him by the king. Every evil the enemy have determined against your house to be wasting money, to be spending money. Every evil determined against you. It will not be long, you will hear the news. From now to two months, the evil shall go back to sender. Verse 8. Read it. Then they what? Then they what? Then the king returned out of the palace garden into the place of the banquet of wine. And Haman was fallen upon the bed wherein Esther was. Then said the king, Will he force the queen also before me in the house? As the word went out of the king's mouth, they covered a man's face. And Habona, one of the Shabali, said before the king, Behold also the girl of fifty cubits high, which Haman had made for Mordecai, who had spoken good for the king, standing in the house of Haman. Then the king said, Hang him, Jerem. Verse 10. So they hanged Emma on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king wrought pacified. Somebody say back to sender. In chapter 6 and Emma answered the king for the man whom the king delighted to honor. Go ahead to 12. Let the royal apparel they brought which the king used it to wear. And the horse that the king ride upon. And the crown royal which he set upon his head. They brought him and he started saying, you see, because he was shocked. The king took him to his own chamber inside. Ah, he said, this man loved me. And the man was depressed. Anytime he needs to wake up himself, somebody comes to play music for him. We call the the orchestras it will make him happy and that day he was they were playing the music he was reading through the books and checking the content that are there and then he saw that there was a time there was called guitar coup that went up against him and the person who stood to defend the coup was not rewarded he called this stupid hammer and the Emma assumed that the king so loved him. And he began to ask him what should be given to the person in parable who has stood for the king, who has become a blessing to the king. And come and hear Bros. Grammar because he thought 
it was himself. Anybody who loves himself so much, one day will lose himself. The Bible says, Woe unto you! If you, lost, if you love your soul, one day you will what? You will lose it. And the king began to ask him, Tell me! He said, Let the royal apparel be brought, which now he's not trying to take what belongs to the king. The king is alive. You are choosing what should be taken from the king and given to you. And the king was ready because a king is a king. No matter what you take from him, he's still a king. You only took material things. What bring the material things is still there. The connection, the grace is still there. He said, let the royal para be brought with the king you said to wear. Did you see the things? He's not deciding the king property. And the horse that the king ride dead upon. It's like you are not hearing me. And the crown royal which he set upon his head. If you are greedy, envy and jealousy, know that and you admire your boss instead of admire him in prayer. You say what he has, you want to take it. Or you want to take his glory. Just know that death is calling you. Don't say I didn't tell you. You want to share his glory. You want to take what belongs to him. You are trying to smart him. What I'm telling you now is here. Just know that what? And the crown royal which is set upon his head. Go ahead. And let this apparel and the horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble, the prince, that they may array the man with her, whom the king delighted, and bring him on horse back through the streets of the city. That is, they should hide him. Everybody should know. He's planning to overtake the king now. Through the, through the what? Through the streets of the king's city. The street of the city. And then they should proclaim loudly before him. Everybody are now seats. Look, look at this. Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delighted. Go ahead. Oji. Then everybody, then the king said to him, Make haste, take the apparel, the horse, as thou hast said, and do evil so. Hey! The Lord is about to turn the table for someone here. You have been denied, you have been rejected, you have been abandoned. Enemy has covered your glory, your face. But I speak from this altar after the order that the man of God from Judea was calling and crying on the altar to speak to somebody. Your destiny is about to metamorphose. Heaven is about to remember you. You felt you are no connection, nobody, and they have abandoned and kept you at the side. But God told me something is about to happen. People will soon hear your voice, your connection. Lift your hands and shout, Great! They asked him to bring the man he never want to see. He has thrown the man away, far away. Say, go and bring the man. Like some of you, after you have labeled your marriage, labeled everything, you have work. Somebody is the one blocking the, the office. People around you are the one fighting people that could be a blessing to you. Do you hear that? Go ahead. He said, make haste. Be in a hurry. Don't even delay. And take the apparel and the horse as thou hast said. Who talk on? And do evil so to Mordecai the Jew that seated at the king's that one day gate in the shamba with the man. Gate man has become a guy. 
I pray for someone today. God will bring you from the back seat to the front seat. From rejection to projection. From nobody to somebody. You shall become the celebrity of the town. You shall become the voice of the man. Lift your hands up fire. That seated at the king gate. And he said, Let nothing fail of all that thou had. Now you talk. Huh? If any of these things fail, you are in trouble. Verse 11. Then took Haman, the apparel, the horse, Arab Mordecai, brought him on horse. Hey, hey, Lakutaya. Brought Mordecai on horse back through the streets of the city. No hidden place. And then proclaimed before him, Thus shall it be done unto the man whom the king delighted to honor. And in verse 12, and Mordecai came again to the king's gate. But Haman hasted to his heart's money and having his head covered. Stand up on your feet. Money and having his head. Say, don't go to rise. As many that want me to be put to shame, cover them with the cloth of shame and disgrace. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. As many that are fighting me, that want me to be put to shame, anywhere they are gathered against me, Lord, gather them with shame and disgrace, with the cloth of shame, gather them. You are not praying the prayer. Gather them, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. <laughs>